members of the Mayhem Nation. Indeed, if you are listening to us right now, welcome to the official Monday Night Mayhem podcast on iTunes and the Monday Night Mayhem Audio Vault, the award-winning Monday Night Mayhem Radio Network presented by RealWrestling.com. We're going overtime for your folks here. Myself, the Big Mosh, along with my tag team partner and co-host, the chairman of the board, Todd Vincent. And yes, Todd, good things do come to those who wait if you are a Ring of Honor fan and you're a very patient member of the Mayhem staff such as yourself. Yeah, I got to tell you too. You know, um, the the person we're about to interview here is far and away in the last six months, uh, six to nine months, I'd actually say, uh, since last summer, been the most the most requested person that we've been asked to interview from Ring of Honor. And uh, I myself, I'm a real big fan. Love this guy's work. I can't wait to get into uh, talking about uh, how how it's been going and what he's been doing and uh, everything else. And of course, this Friday in Dayton, Ohio, the hometown of Chris Hero, and this Saturday in Chicago, Illinois. More details on the cards can be found at ROHWrestling.com. Tickets are still available, tickets.com. One half of the Kings of Wrestling, one half of the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, Chris Hero, joining the Monday Night Mayhem Radio Network for the first time ever. Hard to believe. Chris, we appreciate you joining myself, the Big Mosh, and the chairman of the board, Todd Vincent. How are things for you on your Monday? Gentlemen, thank you for having me. I'm doing uh, rather well this evening well we appreciate you joining us Uh, let's start off we just made the huge announcement just a few moments ago with kevin kelly as part of the kickoff of our ring of honor on the road segment driven by ticketrelief.com ring of honor returning to the hometown of the monday night mayhem radio network buffalo new york and the huge announcement on top of that the next night ring of honor's next internet pay-per-view taping just down the queen elizabeth expressway Exactly, in Toronto, Ontario, at the Ted Reeve Arena. Before we get into Dayton and Chicago, and you winning the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles with Claudio Castagnoli, your partner in the Kings of Wrestling, how excited are you about the announcement of the next internet pay-per-view and Ring of Honor coming back to a market that it had a pretty good uh, pretty good run at in Buffalo, New York? Uh, I can't speak personally about wrestling in Buffalo for Ring of Honor because I haven't yet, uh, but I have taken part in a handful of ballpark brawls, so uh, I I am familiar with Buffalo, Uh, so I am looking forward to being a part of that, as well as the next pay-per-view, I mean, what a a great market Toronto is, and I'm I'm really flattered that they're going to have us for a pay-per-view. Chairman, I know that we are very proud as part of the Monday Night Mayhem Radio Network to actually make that announcement, and once again, Ticket information will be made available first thing tomorrow morning or whenever you're listening to this. I'm sure it will be made available within the forthcoming hours ahead on ROHWrestling.com. The fans of Buffalo and Toronto, as well as the rest of the Western New York and Southern Ontario area, are going to have a good Father's Day weekend, a good start to the midpoint of their June t- chairman. That is correct, and I do have the information um, beginning on Wednesday. Uh, tickets are available at www.rohwrestling.com. You can call the ROH ticket offices at 215-781-2500, or you can call the Fairgrounds box office at 716-649-3900, and you can also look at their website at www.the-fairgrounds.com. Absolutely. Chris, uh, before again we, we get into Dayton and Chicago, let's... Uh, Let's take the rewind button, if we could. Probably one of the most defining matchups of your career. You've been doing some great things with Chris, your partner in the Kings of Wrestling, since reforming the team and having the opportunities to now have the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles around your waist. The Big Bang, it was a great night for you. Give our listeners the inside perspective on what that night was like, what it's been like to reform the Kings of Wrestling with Chris, uh, with, 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 with Claudio, and then based on that exactly, the sky's the limit for you going forward from here. Uh, I will say that I think it was just a matter of time. Uh, Both Claudio and myself have been around the horn together for a little over eight years now. We've uh, gone through just about every dynamic you can imagine from teacher to student to roommate to best friend to uh, (laughs) roommate to no longer roommate to uh, not keeping in contact to... uh, you know, the the optimum of our careers, and it just made sense for us to get back together, and uh, the sum of two parts is uh, greater than, than both individuals, and especially in this case, because I, I, I can't see 
any tag team in wrestling right now that's better than the two of us. And I really appreciate Ring of Honor giving us the opportunity to show that to the world. Uh, Pro Wrestling Noah uh, put us on a pretty big platform in January in their global tag league, and we carried that momentum back to the States, and uh, we put on a, a hell of a match with the Briscoes and Charlotte. Uh, probably our best tag match together, Claudio and I. Yeah, can I ask you, uh, again, like I was saying before, uh, Chris, you know, you've been the, the uh, most requested uh, person for our, uh, for us to interview uh, from ROH. And uh, Steve Fath of Virginia Beach wanted me to ask, and it goes perfectly into what you just said. He wants to know um, just how easy or difficult is it for you and Claudio to come up with new innovative moves, and then, um, you know, how, how do you work him into pulling them off when you're, you know, together as the kings of wrestling? Uh, I will say... Uh, our, I think our first, yeah, our, the first time we ever teamed was in, I want to say, early 2005. Um, and when we were teaming back then, we had a, a different dynamic. Um, you know, I was kind of the leader of the team. He was the new guy. And uh, we, we were able to pull off uh, some impressive stuff. Uh, we're both pretty athletic. Um but there were just certain times when we couldn't get on the same page, and I think that reflected in the, in the breakup of the team and just uh, kind of how we went our separate ways from there. But uh, especially this, uh, like I just spoke of, this tour of Noah and uh, our recent matches in Ring of Honor, he and I have clicked uh, unlike ever before. Uh, we're on the same page, and I think it's all that training we've done together, all the time we've spent together on the road. Um, he and I are oftentimes thinking the same thing, and it's just very natural for the two of us just to kind of go our separate ways during the week and then meet back up on the weekends and just have a, a boatload of ideas, uh, half of which work out, half of which don't. Uh, but I think we've reached a certain maturity in both of our careers where we're able to uh, pick and choose what's best for our matches and best for us as a team. Uh, I'm really fortunate to have uh, such a such an amazing partner. I mean, he is uh, the biggest workhorse I've ever come across in pro wrestling. And at times in my career, it was a little uh, frustrating and intimidating because here's a guy that uh, started out as my student. Um, and it, it's just really frustrating when, when you see somebody passing you in, in every in every different aspect of the game. Uh, but in, in the last year or two, it's really pushed me to uh, step my game up and you know, the, the student became the inspiration, and he's uh, pushed me to become a, a better wrestler and a harder worker, and it just, it just makes us uh, the best team around today, without a doubt. Mayhem Nation, you can log on to, of course, Chris's official Twitter page, by the way, that's twitter.com slash the Chris here. You can be part of his 3,600-plus followers in the process. Chairman, back to you, my friend. Well, you know, again, I want to go back to, uh, to last, you know, you're going to be coming back to Toronto for a pay-per-view later, you know, in a couple months, but I want to go back to Toronto last year, uh, to the same arena, the Ted Reeve Arena, and, uh, you had a long-awaited showdown with Lance Storm, and again, one of the things that a lot of fans have uh, asked us to ask you is that, um, you know, you had that year-long back and forth with Lance, and it finally culminated in you, uh, defeating him in your one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, what was the greatest thing you took away from uh, from that whole uh, program with Lance, and what's the biggest thing that you learned? Uh, Lance is the consummate professional. Um, he took almost two years off and showed up in amazing ring shape and, and put on a hell of a match, which if, if you had seen anything he'd done the last few years of his career, he wasn't really given the platform to uh, show his true ability. And when somebody takes that much time off, uh, they can have all kinds of rust and just be out of touch with the way wrestling is nowadays. But uh, in in many ways, it was a career match for me, but I think in many ways it was a career match for Lance as well. Uh, I think we both benefited greatly confidence-wise from that match. Uh, Lance proving to himself that he can still go and he can still you know, put on a match of the night or, you know, you know, even a match of the year candidate depending on who's actually watching and who's being entertained by the match. But it was also very important for me to have that match and to have a successful match. Uh, I had spent last summer in... Actually, I, I spent um, January through February of last year in Japan... Uh, and I'd also gone over in June for uh, for a tour, 
And that match with Lance uh, was what I had, you know, just in, in, on the horizon for me. I knew that match was coming up. Uh, I wanted to get myself in the best shape possible. And I, you know, I wanted to have a killer match. I didn't want to go in there with Lance Storm and, you know, have a stinker. And, you know, he's coming out of retirement. And, you know, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to embarrass the company that, that they gave me the opportunity. So, uh, it was just always on the back of my mind. And, uh, I'm very, I'm very pleased with the end result. And it did, uh, you know, wonders, uh, for my confidence. I mean, as, uh, as last year progressed, I was given a lot of opportunities. Um, uh, I had a singles match with Go Shiozaki and Cork and Hall that uh, was way better than anybody would have ever expected. Um, I got to wrestle Kenta on TV. I had a title match with Jerry Lynn in Boston uh, that was off the charts for me, and it just it, it carried on a, a string of of really successful opportunities I was able to uh, capitalize on and receive. Chris, your schedule's been very busy over the past couple of weeks and months, of course. I think that a lot of our fans, a lot of our listeners want to know health-wise how you do. And I know, obviously, from WrestleMania weekend, you were a little bit banged up on your things. You've got two big matches this weekend. Friday, of course, your hometown, Dayton, Ohio. So a two-fold question that I have for you. Going back to your hometown in Dayton and you know, basically wrestling in front of your own people on, on, on your end of things, going against Petey Williams in a pick six series match, and then of course the opportunities to have the Ring of Honor Championship around your waist and be a, a, a two a two fold champion, shall we say, going up against Tyler Black in Chicago on Saturday if he still has the gold around his waist. Uh, a little bit banged up is uh, <laughs> quite a bit of an understatement. Uh, just a rather routine thing in the match with uh, Sky and Lost in Phoenix. I just rolled out of the ring. And because it was a different ring than I was used to, I misjudged my landing, which uh, it never happens. Uh, I'm usually pretty good at adapting. But I misjudged the landing. Uh, I hyperextended my, my back and just landed really abruptly and uh, just really threw my lower back all out of whack. Uh, I knew something was wrong immediately. Uh, I was able to finish the match um, but see, I, I knew something was wrong. Uh, as soon as I got to the back, uh, I could barely walk. Uh, I couldn't lie down flat. And I just thought, you know, I'll sleep it off. I'll feel better in the morning. And when I woke up and just the, the pain that, that I was experiencing throughout the, the next 24 hours was just excruciating. Um, I've had a lot of various injuries throughout the years. I've been pretty fortunate not to have anything too serious. But I, I, I'll go on record and say that this was by far far the most pain uh, I felt, especially on a, on a constant basis. I mean, throughout a 24-hour period, um, I mean, even when I was sleeping, there wasn't any point when I was without pain. Um, so not, not even not even the pain. I mean, we're wrestlers. We can deal with pain. Uh, just the, the looming... Uh, the looming title match coming up the following week with the Briscoes. Uh, just what an opportunity that was, and and w what a you know what a big match to be injured for. So I was uh, I'm really worried about that. Fortunately, uh, miracles can happen, and I you know I iced my back. I stayed off of it, and every day it got about five percent better each day. And uh, I was actually I didn't think I'd be able to, but I was able to hit the gym a couple days before Charlotte and. Uh, I I was pretty easy with it. I got in the ring before the show in Charlotte, and uh, to, to my surprise, I was I was able to uh, perform rather well. And uh, you know, <laughs> when you've got a, a partner like I, I called him a workhorse earlier, a workhorse rather. Uh, that's exactly what Claudio is. Uh, I knew that I could rely on him if I was having any difficulties. Unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, we had a killer match and uh, ended up going about as good as we could imagine. Um, so, uh, my back, it, it still gets stiff from time to time, um, I mean, pretty much every day, but nothing, nothing too severe, I'm working with it, I'm, I'm being smart with it, uh, I'm not one of these guys to just take risks without, uh, proper precautions, so, uh, if you're a fan of mine and you're worried about my well-being, I wouldn't worry too much, because, uh, I, I value my body, I cherish it, uh, I'm not gonna do anything to, uh, cause any kind of permanent damage so i am doing well to answer your question on to the next question uh, i've got p williams friday in dayton 
And, uh, I mean, Dayton's my home. That's where I came up. That's where I started to train to wrestle before I branched out. And, uh, in Dayton, I, I just, I just can't lose. Um, I've, my last match there, uh, I wrestled Brian Danielson in the main event and I came away with a victory from that match. And I've got Pete Williams. Pete's a great, a great wrestler. Fantastic. Uh, I have not wrestled him in a singles match in, Six years. I wrestled him for IWA Mid South in Lafayette, Indiana, long, long ago when he was uh, when he was on the rise. This is before TNA. Actually, he was just a Scott Demore guy then. Uh, but I am looking forward to seeing how the two of us mesh in the ring, and it could be a, a bit of a, a bit of a sleeper match. Um, uh, I know uh, a lot of our fans uh are very critical of of new guys coming in especially from TNA but uh they've been rather receptive to PD and I know he and I are going to have a good one um now as far as Tyler I haven't been too fortunate in my recent matches with him but uh he's a guy I've I've known since you know his first 15 20 matches in the business and uh he's just a phenomenal talent it's it's a pleasure to to get the opportunity to uh have a title match with him in Chicago and uh, I might might surprise some people in Chicago, so don't uh, don't count me out yet. I mean, I am a tag team champion, and I am focused on that. But Claudio's got other stuff this weekend, so uh, I got to do what I did last summer and focus on myself. You know, Chris, you t- you talked about uh, you know your physical condition and and stuff with your back, and then your upcoming matches. And um, the one thing when I when I've heard you know discussed people you know, discussed with people Ring of Honor, and they and you know a lot of it's funny. You're a heel, but you have a ton of fans. Um, that just absolutely love your work. And the one thing that a lot of them have said um, in various forms is that since you've come to Ring of Honor from CZW, you've really grown exponentially in terms of, you know, updating your look, your body mass, your size, you know, even your repertoire in the ring. During your time in Ring of Honor, who do you think has had the most positive impact on you and what, do you, what has been the greatest motivation for you kicking it to that next level? Hmm. Um... Like I said earlier, Claudio has been a, a great inspiration to me, whether he knows it or not, just um, being mentioned with him, being associated with him, um, <laughs> teaming with him and having to uh, sh- uh, ha- put my physique against his. I mean, Claudio's got 4% body fat. He's a he's a machine in the gym. I, I, I think he did an interview where he said he goes to the gym five or six times a day. I'm not really sure about that, but uh, just... <laughs> Just uh, standing next to him is is pretty intimidating, um, regardless of our levels of experience. Um, aside from Claudio, there really isn't there really aren't too many people I can pinpoint as direct inspirations because Ring of Honor isn't about individuals; it's about the team effort. It's uh, about you know a roster of twenty to thirty guys when. There are at any at any given time fifteen of those guys can step into the main event of any show and not be looked at funny. Um, maybe even more. Uh, I actually I would like somebody to go ahead and look through the main events of of Ring of Honor for the past year and see how many different people have main evented because you've got Aries, you've got Tyler Black, you've got the Briscoe brothers, you have uh, Kevin Steen and El Generico, um, you've got. Uh, Roderick Strong, you've got the American Wolves. Uh, there are just so many different guys. You got Kenny Omega. Um, anybody can step in and fill that slot and send the fans home happy, and that's <laughs> that's a hell of a task. Uh, and just to be one of those guys is uh, is more than a pleasure. Uh, to be able to main event shows both as a singles wrestler and as a tag team wrestler. Uh, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that, and especially uh, not to not to jump forward too much, but Claudio Castagnoli and I have a match at the Manhattan Center against the Motor City Machine Guns. Uh, now this is a first time encounter between the two of us in a, in a uh, single tag match. Uh, we were in a, a four way in California, but uh, we didn't really have all that much interaction, but. Um, I, it was a shame. I, I thought this match was never going to happen just because of the way things are. But uh, if there is any team out there now that can hold a candle to Claudio and myself, uh, it's, it's those two guys. Uh, we're completely different teams, um, and I have no doubt that we're going to bring the best out of one another. So, so, yeah, needless to say, I'm looking forward to Manhattan. 
you know, Chris, I did want to get into one question that you sort of uh, alluded to a little bit. You talk about the Manhattan Center going up against the Motor City Machine Guns. There's a lot of uh, speculation amongst whoever you talk to, whether it be a fan, someone in the business, that as a result of Jim Cornette, and he's done fantastic things with Ring of Honor, feel free to you know, echo exactly what sort of uh, impact he's made on, on your career within your time in, in Ring of Honor. But the main thing I'm curious about is you as a Ring of Honor contractually bound talent, are you worried in any way, shape, or form that there's going to be any sorts of, uh, how shall we say, scuttlebutts or potential clashes with with TNA, there's obvi- you know, obviously you know, a lot of guys want to get as many bookings as possible. It's the sole point of the wrestling industry. But is there any fear, at least on your end of things, with a potential collision with TNA over this over the war of words, if you want to call it, between Jim Cornette, Vince Russo, and Eric Bishop, where this could impact Ring of Honor's ability to get TNA talents that have been with the company before, at least for a show here or there, or for a or for a possible future collaboration, does this jeopardize that? Uh, personally, I would say that's not something to worry about, just because, like anything else, if you sit and you worry about it, uh, one of two things happens. Um, you know, your, your, your worries come true, and then you'll uh, just be annoyed the whole time, or they won't come true, and you'll have worried for no reason at all. Um, I just, I don't really give much credence to those things. If they happen, they happen. Uh, if they don't happen, fantastic. So uh, I think we're all just focused on giving the fans the best show possible, the best matches possible, and uh, the most unique combinations possible. So uh, if that happens, uh, shit, it sucks. But that's not something I'm going to focus on, and that's not really something that's, uh, at least in my circle, it's not something that's uh, discussed routinely. Um, I mean, we just we like to focus on positive things. Uh, positivity breeds positivity, I believe. Chris, the, uh, another thing, too, that seems to come up is, is a lot of people have you pegged as to be one of the next Ring of Honor guys to eventually move on to another major company. A lot of people uh, look at you and they, they see that you could uh, you know, probably – go down the path that CM Punk has and maybe even go further in terms of main eventing in the WWE at some point. You know, they think that you would rip it up in TNA. Uh, the question I have for you, and again, this comes from uh, Steve Fath of Virginia Beach, he wants to know where you see yourself uh, in your wrestling career five years down the road. Uh, well, the vague answer to that is I see myself uh, continuing to wrestle for a living, Um Hopefully, I have continued to evolve my skills and my ability and uh, my persona. I, I think what's kept me alive, what's kept me so uh, so fresh and kept me booked over the, the last 10 years of my career is uh, you can take any 18-month period and put it up against any other 18-month period, and it's... I'm the same wrestler, but it's like I'm the I'm a different wrestler. Uh, you can put CGW Chris Hero up against um, the Super Athlete Chris Hero, or you can put um, you know IWA Mid South Good Guy up against um, you know what we got that Young Knockout Kid, for instance. You can put um, Lucha Chris Hero up against uh, Pro Wrestling Noah Chris Hero. There's there's always uh, different layers to my character and not just my character, my abilities and the way I'm mentally preparing for these different stages of my career. Uh, in five years, I hope to continue to be doing what I'm doing. Um, I, I've always said this. Uh, I said this before I was in Ring of Honor, uh, and I'll continue to say it uh, regardless of where I am. I just want to continue to wrestle for a living. Um, I don't. I, I'm not asking for fame or fortune or wealth or, or whatever. Um, uh, I, I want to be financially secure, as uh, just about everybody does. And uh, I just want to keep doing what I love. And if you know, God forbid, something happens and I'm no longer to no longer able to do what I love for a living, uh, I'll have to pursue some kind of means to continue uh, following that uh, dream, which is what I would encourage everybody out there to do, regardless of what your dream is, figure out a way to make it possible. Um, there are different different levels, different layers, uh, but, you know, if you keep, keep your head clear 
and you, you just start accomplishing certain things, it'll it'll direct you in the place that you want to be, and it's just it's 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 good for your life overall and your aspects, your relationships, your your friendships, uh, just your your daily life. Um, I've gone through a lot of different. Uh, struggles throughout my career personally and professionally and I will say that the last year and a half has been the best time period of uh, of my life of my career all that put together and I'm very fortunate for it and I've got a lot of good friends I got a lot of good um, inspirations and uh, yeah I hope I hope that continues um, that's that's kind of vague um, as far as WWE or TNA um, I, I love wrestling it's it's in my blood now, it's it's what I do. It, it's who I am. Uh, it, it's who I am, but it isn't who I am. If that makes any sense, uh, I'm willing to entertain any any kind of idea. Um, I'd like to wrestle more in Japan. Uh, I spent three months there last year, and I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Um, uh, there are dozens upon dozens of guys in uh, WWE who I have not wrestled and would love to. Same with TNA, um, and just as long as I'm wrestling, and people are enjoying it. Uh, I'm happy. Vague enough for you? <laughs> it, it seems to be the politically correct answer, but yeah, it, it, it also gives us, gives us a direction. Well, I think you know, as a, as as a parting shot on on our end of things, Chairman, there's a very good chance at some given point in time, I think that Chris Hero versus CM Punk for World Heavyweight Championship, or I, I don't know, maybe since, from what I'm hearing, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Chairman, Rob Van Dam, as we speak, has just captured the TNA World Heavyweight Championship from AJ Styles. <laughs> that is correct, and you know that because I just sent you the text. <laughs> I, uh, well, absolutely I did, but, you know, Chris, you've had the opportunity to work with several talents. Uh, I, I, let us be the first to tell you that Rob Van Dam is the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion as a parting shot on our end of things before we let you go for the rest of the evening on your end. You worked with Rob just a couple of a couple of uh, I believe a couple of months ago at the uh, PWG. Yeah, Network late late January. Give give me your thoughts on working with RBD and the fact that right now he's he's the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, um, I haven't really kept up with TNA. I've seen bibs and bobs here and there, uh, but I was impressed with Van Dam just as uh, I mean he worked really hard. It was uh, myself, him, and Roderick Strong in a three way. At uh, Pro Wrestling was Kurt Russell Mania, and he still got it. I mean, he, just just like I spoke about Lance Storm, you take some time off and you come back. People really don't know what to expect, but uh, I haven't seen his TNA stuff. But Van Dam definitely has it. He's a little bulkier than he used to be, but uh, he could still spin his torso around and kick you right in the face uh, with with ease, and uh, he makes it look pretty. Um, so, hey, congrats to Rob Van Dam, and hope he keeps having good matches. Indeed, our guest Chris here on the Monday Night Mayhem Radio Network as we wound down our time here. This Friday, Dayton, Ohio, of course, Chris here will be going against Petey Williams in another installment of the Pick 6 Series. And in the main event, one of the two main events this Saturday at the Frontier Fieldhouse in Chicago, Tyler Black is still champion, will be defending the Ring of Honor World Championship against Chris Hero. Tickets available, ROHWrestling.com, tickets.com. You can dial up 215-781-2500. Hero, as a, uh, you know, needless to say, uh, just, just such, such great stuff. Chairman, give the ticket information for the show in Buffalo on Friday, June 18th for the fans of the Western New York and Southern Ontario area for Ring of Honor. Uh, again, you can go to www.ROHWrestling.com or you can call the ROH box office at 215 781 2500, or you can also go to www.the-fairgrounds.com, or call the Fairgrounds box office at 716-649-3900. Chris, your fans are very loyal. Feel free to plug your your Facebook, your MySpace, your Twitter. I'm sure that you've got the bunches of the social networks out there. How can your fans interact with you leading into Dayton and Chicago and beyond that from here into the summer ahead? Uh, well, I still have a MySpace. Um, <laughs> um, not many people keep up with it, but uh, you can still contact me on there. The URL is the Chris Hero, much like my Twitter. Uh, something new I just opened up uh, yesterday, I believe. Uh, I'm opening up a Twitter for my merchandise. I kind of I let things get way backed up, and uh, I'm clearing some stuff out, and I'm going to get some new stuff made. Uh, so Twitter.com slash Chris Hero Merch. 
uh, go on and add me on there, and you can be updated when uh, I get some new stuff in. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. You already plugged my Twitter, so uh, I, I don't mind uh, talking to fans. I'm I'm busy, and uh, if, if it wasn't for the loyal the loyalty of my fans, I mean, I wouldn't have made it to Ring of Honor in the first place. Um, I wouldn't have continued to be featured as prominently as I have in uh, all these different companies. And I got a lot of loyal fans in Southern California. I got a lot of fans throughout Europe uh, that have <laughs> supported me throughout my 30-plus trips, um, whether it be England or Germany or, or wherever it may be. Um, and I also have a Japanese blog for all my Japanese fans. Uh, I met a I met a wonderful gentleman named Eugene, um, and that's uh, with a Y because uh, he's Japanese. He's not uh, he's not mentally handicapped. Uh, he is a college professor. He happens to be Japanese, and uh, he speaks English uh, incredibly well. Uh, I believe he's also a writer, um, and he's so kind as to uh, take my travels in Japan and. You know, I, I write a little bit about the shows that I do over there, and he translates it uh, completely to Japanese, and you know, I'm able to uh, connect with my fans over there, which is it's, it's very surreal. Um, it's well, I've actually got a, a thing in the works for my uh, uh, website, which is thechrishero.com, um, where I have uh, certain matches that I've had in Japan that are on YouTube, whether it be with Shizaki or uh, Taiji Ishimori or Takayama or, or whoever it may be, uh, my, my buddy, uh, Eugene has gone and translated all the commentary, all the, uh, backstage interviews, et cetera, et cetera, and it is incredibly fascinating, uh, to hear, you know, how, how the commentators look at wrestling from, uh, from a, from a Japanese perspective, and it's, it's really flattering. Uh, Claudio and I had a, a pair of matches, uh, where we took on Morishima and Kensuke, uh, earlier this year, and, uh, I got, uh, the transcripts from that, and it's just, it, it's really surreal to read all those, so, uh, that'll be something that'll be added to my site very shortly, but, uh, I think the Japanese blog has been, uh, amazing, and you can find a link to that as well on my homepage.